G'day guys and gal, the Imperium has made some uh, pretty bad mistakes. I mean, they wouldn't be in their current apocalyptic predicament if they hadn't, you know. However, for the most part, these mistakes were born from well-meaning endeavors and from people with positive intentions. The Primarch Project was meant to create legendary heroes that could save mankind from the horrors of the galaxy, and it instead created the majority of the horrors in the galaxy. That was a mistake, but it was a calculated, unfortunate mistake. Except for, you know, old mate. What wasn't a calculated mistake was the Abyssal Crusade. This extremely terrible idea made the Kabul evacuations look perfectly executed and thought out. Like who the hell would think it's a good idea to send 30,000 space marines into the Eye of Terror? I mean, I know who did, but like, bruh. Congratulations, the Imperium now has 30,000 less space marines and Chaos made quite a profit from it as well. After all, when your commander in chief sends you into hell to die and hell offers you a chance to get revenge, I wouldn't blame you for taking it. Before we get started, there's an old game I used to play back before even when I had hair on my balls. King's Bounty, a strategic adventure game with turn-based combat hybridized with real-time exploration. Set in a fantastical medieval world. Ooh, King's Bounty slapped. So imagine my joy when they not only announced a sequel, but asked me to help with their launch. I love my job. So I'm here today to tell you that in only a couple days, King's Bounty 2 is going to drop. Featuring updated graphics, an expanded and complex adventure system, and spicier battles, it's basically everything a sequel should be. The biggest standout for King's Bounty for me is the combination of the RPG adventure as well as the turn-based larger battles. This means that you will control and customize your main hero as you explore the world and make decisions with him or her, and then when you gotta clap some cheeks, whip out the army and do some damage. Games will often opt for one or the other, but here you get both. Nice. Pre-orders are available now using my link below. The first game was incredibly well received and a joy to play, and this one looks like a great step forward for the franchise. Cheers to King's Bounty 2 for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the Abyssal Crusade, why it was such a shit idea, what occurred during it, and what was the result and impact on the rest of the galaxy. Let's get into it. First up, how does some dipshit get so much power and authority that they are able to suey 30 Space Ring chapters? Well, this legendary mistake starts with a big mistake that we've seen too much of lately, allowing religious nuts to gain power. Time and time again, these fanatical fuckwits are allowed to rule, and time and time again, they fuck it for everyone. The Siege of Rax, the Fall of the Celestial Lions, and now the Abyssal Crusade were all instigated by some kitty fiddle and douchebag with a pointy hat. But I digress. The Bible hump and fuck stain we're talking about today is St. Basilius, the Elder who was able to make a name for himself and even be declared as an imperial saint towards the end of the Age of Redemption. The Age of Redemption being the period of time after that evil dick Georges Vandaya was executed and the Imperium was loaded with people in need of a purging. After such a troubled time in the Imperium's history that left mankind reeling and created numerous power vacuums, Saint Basilius rose to the head of the recently purged Ecclesiarchy and was able to get the Inquisition and many Space Marines on his side through cooperation. He was so influential that he even had a number of Space Marine chapters that were directly under his command, not something you see very often, especially from the Ecclesiarchy. In tandem with the Inquisition, Saint Basilius created a new zero tolerance policy towards anything that even remotely resembled heresy. Pornhub was banned, anyone who subscribed to OnlyFans was executed, and you could only masturbate to pictures of the Emperor. To be fair, that last part isn't so bad. It was a shit time to be an Imperial citizen, but in fairness, all reports of heresy and insurrection across the Imperium ceased, as everyone was scared shitless of Mr. Basilius. However, all good things, if you consider extreme oppression and surveillance good, must come to an end. A large warp storm opened up and impacted a dozen Imperial systems. Mutation, corruption, and chaos activity exploded on the affected worlds. And whilst this crisis was averted, mostly due to the fact that a fuck ton of chapters were located within these systems, mostly due to the fact that a fuck ton of space marine chapters were located within these systems, it seems that quite a lot of their gene seed was tainted. Saint Basilius, who pretends to hate taint but secretly loves it, ordered all the effective chapters to come before him and be judged. 30 of the chapters, despite all being still very loyalist, were declared corrupted. 
The chapter masters of these judge chapters were like, shit, well, all right, how about we take a penitent crusade? And St. Basilius was like, good idea, if the crusade goes to the eye of terror. Now the chapters weren't too happy with this. They hoped that their penitent crusade would, you know, take them to some ore confessed world or maybe a high fleet or two, not a suicide mission into the heart of the enemy's empire. However, Space Marines are a proud bunch and decided that to protect their chapter's honor, they would undertake this mission. Now, if it wasn't obvious by now, St. Basilius was no saint. He was a simp for chaos. Usually chaos has a really hard time penetrating the command structure of the Inquisition or Ecclesiarchy due to their vigilance. However, the age of apostasy had really twisted and wounded the Imperium. They had let their guard down and St. Basilius was able to exploit that mistake. The huge fleet of the Judge Space Marines went in as one to the Eye of Terror and immediately upon entering it, engaged in a huge space battle against the forces of Chaos. It was not a clean battle at all. All their senses were fucked from being in the Eye of Terror and the fleet was made up of 30 different chapters with different attitudes and methods of war. The battle got so intense that the fabric of reality broke and it teleported all the loyalist ships to different parts of the Eye of Terror. Yeah, look buddy, not a great start. Separated from their main mass, each chapter faced various different challenges. Some were mercilessly attacked by demons, other by Chaos Marine warbands, whilst others quickly went insane. To their credit, the Judge chapters did purge a lot of Chaos worlds. By the end of the Crusade, around 400 worlds had been wiped clean by the Loyalist forces, which would have done, you know, some nice damage. Definitely not worth losing 30,000 Space Marines over, but at least they didn't all just get sucked into a demonic black hole and you know that was that. Whilst initially a lot of Space Marines did die, most of the chapters actually survived. They survived because they turned to chaos. This is one of the only times where I can totally understand someone selling their soul to the forces of hell. The chapters that were sent into the eye were sent because they had seemingly been corrupted, hence would obviously fall to chaos easier. Whether or not they actually had signs of corruption is not entirely clear, but they definitely weren't the most hyper loyal chapters to start with. On top of that, they had been sent to hell to die despite not doing anything wrong. So you're sitting there, on a hellish world, cock in hand. Most of your battle brothers have died horribly for nothing. A demonic horde is on the way to rape you and your remaining brothers to death. Your soul will be eaten by said demons, and all of this is because of the Imperium you swore to protect. Then, you're offered a choice. Join Chaos, gain immortality and power, don't get raped by demons, you know, at least not straight away, and get revenge on the people that sent you here. I honestly reckon I would choose Chaos. And guess what? 29 of the 30 chapters join Chaos in some capacity. For some chapters, this meant that they fell pretty early on without suffering too many casualties. For other chapters, it meant that they were down to their last squad or two before falling. For other chapters, some escaped and linked up with the Vorpal Swords, who were the only Judge chapter to not fall, whilst the rest of their brothers died or fell. Either way, absolute fucking disaster. As I mentioned, the Vorpal Swords were the only chapter to survive the Crusade, and they did so out of rage and spite. See, they discovered during their holiday in Hell that St. Basilius was an evil little Chaos worshipper. It's not clear how they found this out. Maybe they were like, wait a minute, that little shit, and just kind of figured it out, because you know, who else would suey 30,000 space marines? Or my favorite theory is that a demon taunted them and told them of St. Basilius' true nature, because demons just can't help themselves sometimes, so I could totally imagine that being the case. Regardless, a severely depleted and extremely pissed off Vorpal Swords exited the Eye of Terror 800 years later. Everyone was very surprised and assumed they're all dead because, you know, Eye of Terror for 800 years. After the Inquisition inspected the chapter and was surprised to find it completely free of chaotic taint, the chapter master of the Vorpal Swords declared that Saint Basilius, who was still alive, likely due to the powers of chaos, was a heretic and that he and all of his relics followers and records must be destroyed in their entirety. Now you would probably think that due to St. Basilius's influence, he could just say that the Space Marines were obviously corrupted during their stay in the Eye of Terror and that this was just some titsnitchian plot to overthrow the Saint. But since the 800 years when they first embarked on this ill-fated crusade, the Imperium had steadied itself and was well past the age of apostasy. The Space Marines were thoroughly examined and found to be uncorrupted, so that couldn't be it. And people suddenly clued onto the fact that dooming 30,000 Space Marines to death or corruption does seem like something a heretic would do. And like, the Vorpal Swords were basically Doom Guy. Who the fuck is going to agree with Doom Guy? Hence, within a year of their return, the Vorpal Swords had captured St. Basilius, 
executed him, massacred his followers, then put the corpses of the ex-saint, his followers, and all of his relics onto a ship and jetted it at a sun, incinerating it and wiping the cocksucker from the pages of history. Badass. The Vorpal Swords would go on to make a near complete recovery, and would be known for their extreme martial prowess when dealing with the Servants of Chaos. So what effect did losing 30,000 Space Marines have on the Imperium? Well, quite a lot. A full chapter of Space Marines is enough to protect multiple star systems with up to trillions of human lives. With the loss of 30 chapters, that meant that there were potentially hundreds of systems that had lost their main form of defense and were now vulnerable to all sorts of nasty things. On top of that, Chaos had gained thousands of new Trader Marines and had formed quite a lot of new Chaos Warbands. In the years following the Abyssal Crusade, Chaotic Astarte raids onto the Imperium massively increased. Due to A, there were now more Chaotic Astartes, B, there were less Loyalist Astartes, and C, the Chaotic Astartes had a huge boost of confidence after killing and turning a ton of Loyalists. Overall, a really shit result. A really big mistake. But Major Kill, Saint Basilius deliberately sent them to their doom because he was evil. That isn't a mistake. Timmy! Being the biggest mistake of all, your opinion on this matter is not fucking welcome. Sure, St. Basilius technically didn't make a mistake, but he was just one man. The Inquisition, Ecclesiarchy, and the Imperium as a whole gave him that power. Straight up, one of the Space Marines could have just blown his brains out when he started rambling about them popping a suey, but they didn't. Lesson of the day. When a religious zealot gains obscene power, he's probably an evil bastard and should cop a cheeky purge. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where only $1 per month give you access to some pretty uh, non-kosher hentai, kind of stuff that would have been banned by old mate Basilius. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more abyssal content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.